GCX running everything pretty much, and I have to run pedals for now. My pedal drawer. I have to run these pedals for now because my racks aren't set up, my TC electronic delays aren't set up. Everything's running through my compressor, and that's it. EQ'd, fucking my Lamy pedals. That's it. I have usually I have three cabs, a full wet dry setup, but I couldn't put my other cab up because there's no room, and I have to run like my other amp. So I'm just running one cab wet, one dry. That's it. It's pretty simple, I think. called Slip and Sin.
Thank you. Basically, my friend Jack from Five Line Legacy. Um, I'm back from Montreal, like our best friend. I was at his place and he made me hear a tap from CD. I freaked out he was always talking about them. So when I heard they were coming to Montreal on OzFest off date, I went over to their bus and uh, I gave him a CD and a fucking six pack. And Mike thought I was one of the runners, so he invited me up to hang out. And they went up and they started hanging out and they didn't even listen to the CD. They were just like shooting the shit, talking. And uh... Mike liked the demo, so he called Mark. The and he gave me a paper say with Mark's number, like our manager was their manager. And uh, he's like, you have to call this guy. And I'm like, okay. But I, I didn't know really what it was, really. And I'm like, fuck everything. I just want to hang out because it was so cool. It was the first time I ever hung out with a band that I liked, you know? So we just hung out and fucking and that's it, man. Saw the show. And uh, like the next night, Mark emailed me, and that's how it started. How's the recording process in LA? It was really good. It took us, we were there for six months. Um, we were there for four months before we did the record, and then because so much shit happened, like so many things happened that slowed the whole process down. It was cool, man. It's a lot of pressure. <clears throat> and if I, if I could go back, I would like try not to take it as seriously as I did. But we were there meeting producers, demoing, writing, rehearsing all the time. I wanted everything to be perfect. Yeah. Everything went by pretty fast, you know, but we were there for six months. I haven't been to see my parents friend like six months. Oh, yeah. Fucked up and I never left home. Yeah. I had a nervous breakdown at the end of that. <laughs> really? Yeah, <laughs> you from being me. away from home for so long? Or? Yeah, a bunch of shit happened. Like my dad passed away and uh, oh, fuck it was that. fucked up, man. Yeah. And that's it. And like just the pressure of writing recording your first album, you know? Yeah. Wanted everything to be perfect and like uh, whatever, man. It's just like yeah. you have to be positive and I'm not that kind of person. So <laughs> yeah. Who's the producer? Neil Avron. The first producer was really excited about us and I think we had an immediate kind of like connection with him. I wanted him like right away. We all wanted him right away because he had a bachelor's in music and he's more of a song guy. He's not just like, oh, we're gonna make you the fucking heaviest band or whatever, you know. And yeah. Mark and Dino, our management is like fucking, you know, totally musically involved all the time and they're like part of us, you know. So he doesn't touch us if we don't have to be touched, you know what I mean? Yeah. Ozfest? How was it? It was cool. Ozfest it was, uh, Ozfest was Ozfest. I mean, it was awesome because you get to play like in front of so many kids every day. But it depends on where you are, how they how they receive you and shit. Some yeah. days, some days it would be a bit like we get better receptions than other days. Mm -hmm. But I found the last half of the tour was really cool. But it's just fucking brutal. The heat was like too much, and you only get to play 20 minutes, and you play sometimes at 9:30 in the morning. Yeah, so then for the rest sucks. of the day, you're kind of like fucking trying to find shit to do. Now this is the part where I'm supposed to be excited. And but like sometimes it just feels like after so many shows you just you you, you know you're supposed to feel excited to so yeah. feel excited but in reality you're not really excited until two songs after the show begins I a couple of minutes into it and then I remember why I, I was supposed to be excited totally yeah totally. Never fit into the mold I was given 
I don't think he'll be very happy if we went into it. He'll probably like kill us all. This is my messy bunk. Usually, it's a fucking very clean bunk, but it's the beginning of the tour and I haven't had a chance to tidy up. Steve is up here, Warren's in here. Junk bunk, junk bunk. Uh, junk bunk, junk bunk. Max, the mental case with the fucking TV and the full fucking stereo system with subwoofer because he's a little bit of a maniac. I have to say, gadget freak. Um, up here, I think it's uh, Wonder. That's so, and that's Jeff. This guy won fifteen hundred bucks in the casino last night. No way. You won how much in slots? Thousand five U.S. dollars. <laughs> that's gonna pay for my engine and my '62 Bolero that I just bought. Done and done. Look, not even, we don't even have a thing. We're just in the, um... You're just what? We're in the, like, nameless P section. You have a girlfriend, right? Yeah. How's that on tour? Oh, uh, it's okay. I miss her. Yeah. A lot. I love her, so I miss her a lot, you know? Yeah. But, uh, it's cool, you know? You get used to it. I don't find it hard, like, the like, way other people do, like, oh my god, there's all these hot chicks. I'm bad if I'm hot because I'm not with my girlfriend. Yeah. But, I mean, it's all good. You know, we love each other, so... That's why we do it, you know? You don't have a girlfriend, right? Not anymore. What happened? Fucking ass. Well, go to LA for six months and ignore her. That'll happen. Awesome. Me and Max, usually, we shit in Dom's, like, pillow. Like, in the bus, and then we put him in his bunk, and when he goes to bed, he sleeps on it. Yeah. What happened? What happened? <laughs> Max's idea to fuck you over in the bus. What happened? Look at this bro, I'm a lion man, I'm a Leo, look at that. Jeff, uh, let me some cash, you fucking bastard. Who else plays the antics? I play the skin flute. flute. Baby wipes, that's all man, that's all you need in your backpack. 
we're actually shower for four days, man. Dumping baby wet. That's, that's what it is. And like after body spray, that spray that makes you smell clean, but you're really not. Fucking rules, man. I Undefeated, bro. Undefeated. Really? Yeah, I'll show you the that's bottle. That's what it's called? Yeah, it's a bottle. I always win with that shit. Yeah. Because you're undefeated. I'm undefeated, bro. <laughs> Set. Oh, fucking awesome. Pulse Ultra. 
<laughs> I like this drummer. He fucking rocks out. First time I saw him. Fox Ultra was fucking awesome. Oh yeah, I saw Fox Ultra. You like him? Fuck yeah, man. Real fucking good. First time I saw the first show, I was fucking impressed. Severa is fucking rocking. I've seen Pulse Ultra and they were pretty good. Really? They were real good, actually. Pulse Ultra! Woo!
We're gonna fucking start this shit, shut the fucking intro off. This fucking song is called Phase Fucking One Acceptance! Yeah. 
you guys been playing? Uh, like individually or <laughs> as a band? Uh, as a band, about five years. He came in about four years ago, roughly. Really? Yeah. But the three of us, like, for like about five, five and a half years, and about four years now, three and a half years, he's been in the band, uh -huh. so. More or less, that's been playing for a long time. Yeah, me and Dominic have been playing for 11 years together. Yeah. How old are you? 23. 22. 22? Yeah, all around pretty much. 24, 23. Max is 24, Dom's 23. Well, I heard, like, uh, heads, they were called Headspace before, and uh, my friend Claudio was the singer for the band. Yeah. And then I wasn't working out with them, and I was in other bands, like, just trying to, like, I was looking for bands, I was, like, uh, auditioning for, like, a bunch of crappy bands, and, like, whatever, I always respected Headspace. In Canada? Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, and then eventually, like, it didn't Very work much. out with them and Claudio, and uh, they tried me out, and it worked out. Oh. Yeah, and then I'm after three years we got it. signed. Cool. Yeah. What's like What's like the the band that you would love to go on tour with the most? Alive Tap or Dead? Taproot. <laughs> Taproot, man. This really? is like this is the best time for us. Like honestly, 100. percent So even like 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 dream like dream tour. Like I'm talking like fantasy tour. Any Alive band. or Dead? Dream Theater. Extreme. Really? Fuck yeah! But it just we'd get booed off every day, so fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, play your fucking instrument, loser! Stop running around! <laughs> That's what people would say, you know? But, uh, no, Dream Theater, fuck, man. Extreme, if they were still around, Van Halen. Mm -hmm. Fuck, man, those are those are bands we want to tour with. Well, I want to tour with, at least, you know? Yeah. How, how was the experience with, uh, 16, check and like, recording and shit in L.A.? Hey, What's that all about? It was hey, cool, man. Go. It's a lot of pressure. <clears throat> Damn. And if I, if I could go back, I, I would, like, said, try not to take it as seriously as I did. Talk fast. The guy that's about it, for like, because uh, I went a little crazy, because, like, I wanted everything to be perfect. perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Being anal is kind of, like, good, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's good, but sometimes when you're over-analytic, like, you can, like, Make it this worse. Guy yeah, totally. Yeah. To uh, what about like? You what are your expectations for, you. for the tour? For this tour? We just have a good oh. time, man. I'm playing in front of like, do what oh, I love, man. I'm just blessed to do what I love. Totally. And that's about it, man. Go in with Call zero expectations. Back. Just play our, your heart out every night, and that's it, man. And just spread the word, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and hope for the best. I went to bed at seven. So I woke up at 5:30 today. Yeah, what that's do you guys? What do you guys usually do, like at night, like when, uh, like if you have a drive? Nothing, man. Touring is boring. Really? <laughs> Just fucking throw throw in a movie <clears throat> and fucking kick it. I yeah. try to try to be productive. Try to practice guitar. Mm -hmm. Try to like read. Do a lot of reading. Mm -hmm. Just anything to keep yourself sane. Yeah, it's, totally. It's like it's hard to motivate yourself. That's anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. you Ozfest. How was it? It was cool. Ozfest was. Uh... Ozfest was Ozfest. I mean, it's awesome because you get to play like in front of so many kids every day. But it depends on where you are, how they how they receive you and shit. Some yeah. days, some days it would be a bit like we'd get better receptions than other days. Mm -hmm. But I found the last half of the tour was really cool. But it was just fucking brutal. The heat was like too much, and you only get to play 20 minutes, and you play sometimes at 9:30 in the morning. Really? So then for the rest sucks. of the day, you're kind of like fucking trying to find shit to do. So yeah. do they they switch up the lineups. Every yeah, time? Wrote, you go up one. Every day, but Meshuggah, Hatebreed, and Down were all like in the same spot. So mm -hmm. when you get to the spot before Meshuggah, the next day you play the main stage, and then the day after that you play like at nine thirty in the morning. Damn. Yeah. Nine thirty, dude. Nine thirty. Who the fuck is that a show? Nine thirty. Rock and roll, bro. Yeah, rock and roll. Nine thirty. Nine thirty a.m. Nine thirty in the morning. Look at that shit. Nine thirty. That looks good. Nine thirty. Is there so there's kids at nine thirty? A couple hundred, like a few hundred kids. Sometimes it'd be like there was a line when I was. That means they get up at eight in the morning to rock Fuck. and roll. Dude, I'd be up at seven, seven, six thirty sometimes, just like getting like ready because my <laughs> body feels like dirt. You know when you wake up and your body's yeah. all fucked up. And uh, but I mean, it's great exposure. It's just it's like it's hard because like a lot of kids are into like a lot of the like fucking heavy, heavy, heavy yeah. like mm -hmm. screaming shit. Uh -huh. And we're not as heavy as that. Obviously, we're more melody driven, so they wouldn't always. Uh, you know, sometimes some kids wouldn't want to. Uh, Deal with it. Yeah, but I mean, it was, all in all, it was cool. The last half, LA was actually our best show of the whole tour, which is ironic. Really? Because everyone was like, oh, LA crowds are dead, and they were fucking going nuts, so that was cool. Did you ever take lessons, like uh, singing lessons? Or yeah, lessons? I worked with uh, this guy called Ron Anderson in LA, uh -huh. and that was pretty cool. He helped me, like, in 10 sessions, he helped me a lot. Really? Yeah. yeah. Was really. that just like. That um, was like $200 an hour lessons, but fuck. like. Yeah. Did the label cover it? Yeah, yeah, the label covered it, and like I taped all the lessons and just keep on practicing with them, and mm -hmm. you see the improvement coming slowly. Fuck. So you guys planning a tour for the rest of the what? Forever. <laughs> it's the only way to go. Never stop. Yeah, we've sold our souls to the devil, so yeah. I, we need to keep on going. No, no, no. We love doing it, but yeah, until until we fucking you know. 
for at least another like couple of years probably, you know, the record's been out what now? August or October for like three months. Mm -hmm. So I mean, then we have no like single, no anything yet, so. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be touring, like, and especially when the single jobs. Like, you guys were in LA for like six months before you freaking like you went into the studio, right? Yeah, six months. <clears throat> it was nuts. It was the fucking. I had a nervous breakdown at the end of that. <laughs> really? Yeah, you <laughs> were being me. away from home for so long. Or? Yeah, a bunch of shit happened. Like my dad passed away, and oh, uh, fuck, it was sorry. fucked up, man. Yeah, and that's it. And like just the pressure of right recording your first album, you know? Yeah. Wanted everything to be perfect and like uh, whatever, man. It's just like yeah. you have to be positive and I'm not that kind of person, so it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, And my ex girlfriend, the bitch, left me. And <laughs> no way! <laughs> That's did going in. Was, yeah, that was going in. Does it, did, did it all pile up at once? Like, was everything all at once? Or? Yeah, I, when it fucking rains, it pours. Yeah. Man, yeah. Who calls the shots? Who tells you fucking what It depends. You're doing? If we meet bands that are cool, that we get along with, and they're going on a tour, then they want to bring us, they'll bring us. Or mm -hmm. if you're booking. If you're booking, booking agency and management and all that shit, and they take care of like that, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And stuff, so we're, we're waiting to see, because this tour is supposed to be like five weeks, but um, it's happened, got the uh, the uh, Mudvayne tour after, like for after two weeks, like, and they're going to be opening up for Mudvayne, but which is awesome, because Mudvayne, they're a big band, so it's happy to get more exposure like that, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're still waiting to see what we're going to do after that. Dope. Figure yeah. it out, though. How did, uh, you guys were saying that Taproot got you guys signed? Mm -hmm. How did they find you guys? When they came through on OzFest 2000, I think, <laughs> it was, like a couple of years ago, they came through Montreal and on an off day with Soulfly, mm -hmm. and they played at a club in Montreal. And Dom went to the show because he heard of Taproot through a friend of ours, Jack, from this awesome band called Five Line Legacy, mm -hmm. really cool band. And uh, he heard of them and he went to go check them out, he brought a six pack of beer, brought like our CD, our press kit, and uh, knocked on the door, he's like, hey, Mike, well, congratulations, success. Uh, he gave him a six pack and they went up and they started hanging out and they didn't even listen to the CD They were just like shooting the shit talking and uh, and then uh, And then Dom like left and he came back later and Mike's like yeah, I listened to the CD Here's my manager's number call him up mm -hmm. and he gave him uh, he gave him Mark's number and Dom got his wisdom teeth pulled the next day So then Mark actually called Dom because he didn't call it here from him And then uh, excuse me, and then we started speaking to Velvet Hammer from there Fuck, that's rad. And then uh, yeah, pretty much everything went from there We got we started getting managed by them and then we got the deal with Atlantic through them mm -hmm. so Pretty much all because of Mike. I don't want to seem like the fucking rock star prick that just goes back to the. That's exactly how I feel too, man. Yeah, that goes back to the bus and like shovels themselves and wants the world to say, where the fuck is Zoe, you know? <laughs> You're like, what is he doing right now? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, so like I like to like mingle with the crowd and just like make everybody realize that like I'm just a fucking human idiot like all of you, you know what I mean? It's yeah. Like, it's gonna give you my definition of art. Since this is the last day we're filming the Your, de your definition of what? Of art. I think I think artists are like are like uh, have the okay. This is my definition of what I think a human artist is. He's a receptor for negative energy, and his his mission in life is to like maybe change that negative energy into a positive source. Yeah. And the whole struggle uh, to becoming an artist is to figure out how to do that without hurting yourself. Cool. That's what I think. I think artists are given. To renate genetics, I don't know, a certain yeah. like quality to receive negative energy or like be very susceptible to yeah. it. And that's the goal of art is to learn how to channel that negative energy into positive a positive things like totally. music or art. Totally. What are you doing, dude? I'm doing my hair. I'm doing my hair. I'm doing my hair. I only have 40 minutes to go on stage, so I'm not gonna have enough time to stretch. But I'd like to thank Jesus for like the great hair and for uh, for the opportunity to uh, do it on camera today. If it wasn't for him, I'd be nowhere. No drugs and stay in school. Right. That's strictly for hair. What? That case? Yeah. Well, no. This is just my bathroom case with all my stuff for like showering and all that crap. Mm -hmm. See? So now I have to fucking heat this up. What'd you put in there? Water. Let's put that, heat it up a bit, because you need to have some like warm water. So put some more water in here, because you need to have some cold water. Chicken, chicken, chicken. Now this is Knox gelatin, good for cooking, making uh, lemon meringue pie. 
I'm doing uh, make, making your hair stand up straight. This is easier. Just get it hot so it melts the gelatin, otherwise it looks like you have fucking dandruff in your hair. It's all white and nasty. It's just like flavorless, like tasteless, like like scentless gelatin, no color, no anything, no nothing in it. It's from a lemon meringue pie and when you need to make like shit like that. You said that already. Shut the fuck up, you fucking pig! You're beating yourself all the fucking time. <laughs> Cause he asked me, mind your own nothing. business. Be yourself and sing that. Mind your own fucking business. It's about half a pouch. Pour the warm water in. Like so. I get my blow dryer. What is that? Blow dryer. Euro 1600, Con Air, like the movie. Except the blow dryer is probably a lot better than the movie was. This bathroom sucks because it's fucking so dark in here. It's not a lot of light. Yeah. But make do with what you have. Then I take some of it like this, swap my hand, put it in my hair. Take the comb. Tough work being beautiful. Someone's got to do it. You know. Otherwise, look at, the, look at the other three guys in the band. We'll be screwed. You have to have a good-looking guy to make it in the band. You know. True. It's not my fault. I guess I just have good genes. Imagine that. Serious. That'd be pathetic. Et voilà, fiston. Tu vois? Tout droit. Tout droit. Tout droit. Just comme ça. Serious. Explain your mohawk in French. Ben, je vais faire mes cheveux parce que je me creuse dans 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 la dans le. How do you say fucking? How do you say ball in French? I don't even know how to say ball. Je me je me creuse en dedans puis je le rentre dans mes cheveux et puis ça le fait dur. Après ça, après ça, c'est c'est à moi de de me creuser dans les cheveux pour pour l'enlever. No, I just said. You want me to translate? Sure. I said I actually have to masturbate into the cup, into the bowl, and then I put in my hair. No, no, that's why I said in French, but I'm just being stupid. I'll explain it for real now. Je mets du gelatine là-dedans avec de l'eau, puis je la rentre dans mes cheveux, et puis hop là, c'est fait. That actually explained it. No, that's cool. One day I'm gonna cut this all off, and I don't wanna have to do anything. No, you can't shit on the bus. You can only piss on it. You can't shit or put toilet paper in the toilet, because basically the bus driver is the guy who has to empty it, and like he hits a button and, it, and like the whole reservoir empties out. But if there's like shit in there, it'll be all clumpy and it'll stick to the sides, and he'll have to clean it. And it's not really nice, and it'll also make the whole bus reek, like like. And uh, even though there's chemicals they put down there, but the new buses, the new buses, they have like grinders in the toilet, so when you poop, it <laughs> grinds up all your poo, so it's like it's liquefied and then. It, yeah, pretty nasty. You want one of those buses? Eventually, I'd like to. How great would it be to have that shit on the bus? Some buses have showers too, the new buses too. Really? So yeah, you can shit and shower on the bus. It would be good. I know a lot of bands, they hot bag. <laughs> yeah. Which means they put like a bag on the toilet seat, yeah. and they poop in the bag and then fling it out the window. Yeah. But we haven't done that yet. Brief relief too, you can, you can piss in a bag, it turns to gelatin. What? Yeah, and you throw it out. And where? It's, they're called brief reliefs. Oh yeah. You just open the bag up, you piss in, and the gelatin. It's specific. The, the powder turns your piss to gelatin. It's specifically made for that. Yeah, for that's piss. cool. I think the shit bags too have some kind of chemicals chemical so that, that thing. dries out your shit. Yeah. Wow. But yeah, until then, you have to go to uh, truck stops and poop in the truck stop toilets. It's probably the worst part of touring, or the least pleasant part of touring is not being able to have your own toilet every day. For me, at least. Almost done. Here. 
My house is nice bread. Fucking bun. Okay, I don't want to get any on the camera. Hey, you guys. I need a beer. Come on in. Hey, we're just working. On a field box. No, we're making a demo. I'm trying to get some major lake interest here. Oh, this is the one we saw, huh? Instant Mohawk. By Uncle Ben's. And this is just stuff that I want to practice. Like, practice standing up because you know when you're practicing down all day? Oh, yeah, you learn totally different. Oh, yeah, you play standing up and it's like, oh, yeah, great, I can't play anymore. Mm hmm Completely different, so yeah. practicing standing up, at least before we go on, is, you know, mm -hmm. a necessity. You need to, like, not feel, like, it feels completely different. Yeah, totally. So, and rhythmic tapping, just because um, I love I love playing drums and bass, so it's there's a lot of, like, rhythmic, if you get your wrists to kind of respond quickly and just fucking have a cool rhythm, mm -hmm. everything feels better. You can kind of get yourself out of sticky spots, you know, when yeah. you're playing, it's like, you can, like, you're not stuck with, like, oh, a certain technique or, like, mm -hmm. a certain you can like kind of move out of the way, you know what I mean? Like it's just mm -hmm. feel more agile. Yeah, totally. Like, just practice stupid, like stupid, you know, rhythmic mm -hmm. shit on it. I started thinking about this thing that happened years ago. What happened? my makeup. Thought about it. You said, what? My makeup. Tell me about it. Do you, do you want any makeup on stage? I see. Right. Where the fuck? What are you doing, dude? Nothing. Wonder. As hard. What are you doing, dude? Nothing. What's that? Hey, what's on your eye? Nothing. You just... I'm a whore. I'm such a slut. You are. You are. What are you doing? You have two pairs of those? Fuck yeah, bro. One show, show pair, one for free. Exact same shit. Man. Explain what? Explain. One's for show, one for not show. Because these are tighter. For show? Yeah, and if I lose them, I'll kill myself because I really like these. I buy two of everything. I don't know why. Are you from LA? Yeah. How long you lived there? Uh. Pretty much all my life. I was born in Philly, but I moved to LA when I was uh, three. Really? Pretty much a native. Mm -hmm. Grew up in the valley, Sherman Oaks, until high school, and then relocated down to the beach, Westchester, nice. Playa del Rey. How old are you? Just turned 34. Really? So you know, like, uh, did you ever go to like Reseda? Country Club, oh, yeah, all, stuff, time, sure, all those shows, oh, yeah, stuff like that. I've seen all those bands. Mm -hmm. Warren, they used to mix Racer X back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Seen Warren, Racer X, Shark Island, Bang Tango, mm -hmm. all those hair bands, Keel, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Nice. Crazy. Chuck oh. Landis's Country Club. Mm -hmm. Now they do uh, amateur boxing in there now. Really? And barely, they don't even do any music. Yeah. I mean, it, was a, it was a hot spot back in the early mid 80s mm -hmm. what was uh, what was one of your favorite 80s experiences uh, uh, just, this, just all the people out on sunset you know mm -hmm. Gazzari's Roxy whiskey the rainbow Friday, room Saturday night there's like thousands of kids on the streets hanging out mm -hmm. passing out flyers all the clubs are packed it was definitely a change scene than it is now, you know? Mm -hmm. When did you start doing like uh, engineering and tour S managing? Started in 80, started in 88, 89 at the Troubadour. Really? I was there for about two years. Mm -hmm. And then a friend of mine said, you know, come up to a real venue. <laughs> come to the Gazzari's. So I started work going up to Gazzari's and there was a monitor guy there for a, for a while and I had a really good friend at the Roxy. Mm -hmm. I said, fuck Gazzari's, come over to the Roxy, man, that's that's the premier club. Yeah. Roxy Whiskey, mm -hmm. same owner. So I started working really? at the Roxy. I never knew that. Rolling up cables and everything. And I was there for eight years. Mm -hmm. Damn. Good money? No. But it was the experience that you can't pay for. Yeah, it's just the scene, everything about it. school, self-taught. Mm -hmm. just, uh, just started mixing and uh, learning stuff. Watching other engineers, stealing some techniques, putting a little flavor of mine in, mm -hmm. and just uh, 
rolled up a lot of cables for free, slept on a lot of couches, you know, but I was dedicated to my art, you know? Yeah, totally. And um, one day, you know, the house guy says, you're mixing tonight. And I said, all right. Mm -hmm. Jumped into it and started doing it. So I was there for about two or three years and then uh, the owner of the club says, man, you're around this you're around this club enough, you know all the bands, why don't you start booking the venue? I said, okay, so I, I booked the venue for three and a half years. Mm -hmm. I booked all the talent, all the national and local acts. I started the hardcore scene in LA. Really? Yeah, at the rock scene. Any hardcore band was in LA. Mm -hmm. It's never played the Sun Sister because it was all pay to play, a lot of glam, a lot of garage bullshit. Mm -hmm. I turned it around. Really? Two, so years, you... two years I made it the number one venue in LA. I mm -hmm. made it the premier sound club in LA. Um, just booked all the bands that no one else wanted to touch. Mm -hmm. I started System of a Down, started Static X. Uh, I booked Corn when they played in front of 10 people. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> I played for my uh, played for my twenty eighth birthday party. Uh huh. I remember playing with the Offspring when there was like four people there. Yeah.